So will the engines represent it? I guess they would. Would you mind if people use the same concept as you have in the making of this series? Of course not. I mean, like I've said previously, I can't be the only one who has ever thought of combining Tugs and Thomas the Tank Engine in such a way. So, by all means, go for it. If you could or had to live in another country, where would it be? Well, if I had a choice, I wouldn't live anywhere else. Simply because I love living here in Australia. I love my house, I love the location I'm at. Yeah, it's just ideal for me. If I had to, maybe I'd probably go to England because, well, I haven't traveled a lot. Uh, actually, I've traveled hardly anywhere, but England would, I have traveled to England and I did like it there a lot. Or I would probably be, maybe go to Fiji. That's also another place I've been to and it was absolutely beautiful. Favorite era or type of music? Uh, I don't really have a favorite. Um, if I like it, I'll listen to it. That's pretty much it. Although I do love Nickelback. They are my favorite band and their song, Gotta Be Somebody, is my absolute favorite. When Toby was speaking Spanish in Mainline, did someone help you with the translations or did you do it yourself? Does Google Translate count? Yeah, that was the resource I used. Uh, I don't speak Spanish. I don't speak any other language. I've barely mastered English as it is. But uh, yeah, you know, just on that note, uh, I did have a couple of native Spanish speakers write comments in uh, that video and they weren't scathing or anything. Uh, a lot of them were actually pretty understanding, but uh, I'm sure it was obvious to maybe even non-Spanish uh, speakers that um, I did kind of struggle with it a bit. So I don't hold uh, my it, uh, translations up to be 100% accurate or, and certainly not my pronunciation. So if there are any Spanish speakers uh, listening, uh, sorry if you were put off by my butchering your language. Uh, no offense was intended. What would you be doing today if you didn't decide to do YouTube? Probably getting myself a Netflix account and binge watching every show on there. If Tugs made a season two, what kind of stories do you think they would have done? My guess is probably more of the same. You know, the Star Tugs doing good work, the Z Stacks trying to undermine them, the Star Tugs coming out on top, the Z Stacks being thoroughly humiliated. Yeah, I think that would have been it. To be honest with you, I think the only thing that might have saved the show if it had kept going would have been the dialogue, because I always did think the dialogue in Tugs was extremely good, even if the, um, the plots were incredibly divisive and, well, kind of cliche. Will you use the Tugs danger theme? I'll tell you what, I'd love to, but I've never been able to find a good quality one of it anywhere. Tell you what, if anyone does know, please sound off in the comments below. What episode of Thomas the Tank Engine is your least favorite? That would be Stephanie Gets Lost. Yeah, I never really liked that episode because, well, okay, Stepney somehow ends up in a scrapyard. He gets nabbed by two diesels who seem hell-bent on killing him. The giant claw comes down, and then at the last possible moment, he's saved by none other than the Fat Controller, who, by all logic, shouldn't even be there. But then, what am I saying? I'm trying to introduce logic to a show about anthropomorphic trains so yeah that was like really kind of predictable like i mean there was no way they were going to let it an engine get scrapped much less stepney and also that that last bit at the end where he where stepney is leaving the scrapyard and he shouts out bluebells forever that just always seemed weird to me what creative challenges have you faced when making and developing your videos are there any techniques you have picked up or learned as your series has progressed over time? Probably the greatest creative challenge I've faced is my constant stammering and stuttering whenever I go to do the voices and the narration. That's probably the biggest impediment I've faced. Uh, filming and everything else, that's, that's the easy part really. Although that's also the most time consuming as well. Because like, I think uh, for every maybe three hours of filming I do, I might get maybe four or five minutes worth of uh, usable footage out of it. 
And as for the techniques I've picked up, well, I've learned to plan ahead a lot more. And uh, I've also learned, like, uh, to be a little bit more patient as well, like to try not to get, to not frustrate, to not get um, as frustrated, although that doesn't always work. How many custom locations do you have on your railway? A lot. Yeah, I know that's not very specific, but that's the best I can answer because uh, with a few exceptions, um, I actually filmed my series on one gigantic route. You see, over the course of several weeks when I was first starting out this series, I actually um, sort of uh, made a custom route combining multiple routes from other users and then I sort of um, slotted them together like an enormous jigsaw puzzle and in between the routes or when necessary I made alterations. Uh, all the, um, the route creators are credited in my series so I haven't left anyone out. So uh, yeah, I really can't say how many custom locations I have. Why did you remake your old videos? Because the voice work was shocking and there were also a few other uh, problems with it as well. So I decided to make uh, alterations to uh, make them better. And I think that I have. Do you like Tugs or Thomas more? Uh, well, I like them both equally. Really, I can't pick one over the other. I have a fan theory for your series. Can I make a video about it, please? Of course. Are you going to release a deleted footage video? No, because I use most of the footage that I film and anything I don't use, I get rid of it. But there is one thing I will show you guys. What you're about to see is the original intro I had planned for my series. Spy, what is this drawing? Uh, that. That's not mine. It was in your locker. I didn't draw it. Spy. Someone put it no, there. Listen, I don't draw stuff you like that. You drew it, you bloody liar. You signed it. Ah, uh, did I sign it? Spy, why did you draw yourself as a fluff, two-legged wolf person? That's my fursona. Your fucking what? His name is Dutch. He's my fursona. What the fuck is a fursona? I role play as a soft shy wolf boy on Twitter. You act like a dog on the internet. Dutch is a wolf, but yes. Well, I just like to be cute. Cute? Yes. You just like to be cute? Yes. Do you think I don't notice the fat fucking bulge in his pants? Oh, huh? What? what the fuck Nothing. was that? Nothing. What did you I say? Didn't say it. Yeah, vastly inferior to the one that I'm currently using, I think, anyway. And what's really strange is until three days before I was going to start up my channel, I was dead set on using the intro you just saw. And then all of a sudden, on that day, I was struck by this absolute amazing bout of creativity, this epiphany, as it were, about uh, synthesizing the Tugs uh, uh, opening theme into my series. And the intro that I'm currently using, the one that you guys have all seen up to this point, I whipped that up in about three hours, and it was incredible, really. And then... Um, uh, I went back and I added it to every single video that I'd already made up to that point. I redid them and everything. So, isn't it funny how just uh, how creativity can just strike you like a lightning bolt? Would you consider working for the Thomas Creator Collective? I'd certainly be on it, but I'm not arrogant enough to think that my work is is up to their standards. So, I'd wait for an invitation from. Uh, uh, such a distinguished group, I certainly wouldn't approach them. Will you do a face reveal? Yes, I will. Why have you put Lily, Adam, Colin, Donald and Douglas as rivals for the LNER and not the Diesels? Because Steamies versus Diesels, it's been done to death. And also, the time period at which I'm starting my series, there weren't a whole lot of diesel engines around then. And yes, I know I'm completely stretching historical truth and accuracy by including Diesel in my series, but, well, I couldn't not. And besides, I would find it very hard to believe that all steam engines got along amicably before the advent of Diesels. Like, 
okay, maybe when diesel engines came along, uh, steamies would have found camaraderie with one another, like they were essentially a dying breed, so to speak. But yeah, like I said, it, there had to have been rivalries among steam engines before then. So that's kind of what I'm exploring with my series. Am I going over the top and exaggerating it a bit? Most certainly. But I think it provides for an entertaining story nonetheless. Do you like cats? I prefer dogs. Like, if I had to pick a pet, I would certainly choose a dog. If you could pick a real-life locomotive to be an original, Thomas, or Stories of Sodor character, what would you choose? What characteristics would he or she have? Hands down, I would pick the 3801. Uh, I'll save you lot the Google search. Uh, the 3801 is this fine specimen here. It's an NSWR 38 class 462 tender engine. Uh, it was in service from 1943 to 1976. It's pretty much uh, the Flying Scotsman of Australia in that it's pretty much an engine that everyone knows about, or at least anyone who lives near uh, the railway tracks will, will know about it. And I'd pick this, I'd pick this one uh, also for a personal reason in that I actually saw this engine in action when I was a kid. I think I may have been about five or six and it was doing a tour and it stopped at a station uh, not so far from where I was living at the time. And I just remember thousands, and there must have been thousands of people flocking to the station to see it in action, just the hissing steam and whatnot, and yes, all, yes, I am aware that it's green, that was also another major appeal for me, and also my, my parents took a photo of the 3801, and then they enlarged it and framed it, and we had that photo for years and years and years, might even still have it somewhere, and I couldn't help but not smile every single time I looked at it. And, you know, now that I think about it, I'm wondering if that might have actually been the catalyst for my love of trains. Although I am told that I did have something of a keen fascination for it when I was younger than that, maybe about two. But this had to have been a, uh, a key component towards stoking my love of trains, specifically steam trains. Uh, I don't know whether this would qualify as sexist, but I could only think of the 3801 being male. Uh, what characteristics would he have? I would probably imagine he'd be like Gordon, in that he'd take great pride in being a very fast, very stylish steam engine. But I imagine he wouldn't have... Oh, he wouldn't be so much of a snob about it, because uh, snobbishness is not really uh, well looked upon here in Australia or anywhere else in the world, but here in Australia, if you're a snob, you won't get far. Also, I don't know why, but I'd imagine um, him being named Bruce. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, I certainly wouldn't, if I had the, to pick, I certainly wouldn't go by a number. I, I'd call him Bruce. What do you call a train that carries apples and bananas? Tutti Fruity. I, I swear, that wasn't my joke. It was a legitimate question that was posted in my Millennium video, and I just thought it was too good slash bad to not include. So kudos to the user who posted it. You know who you are. Okay, on that extremely lame joke, I think I'll leave it for today. There are only a few more questions, but too many to tack on to this video, I feel. So the next Q&A video, which will be uploaded tomorrow, will be the last one. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this one. I hope you'll enjoy the next one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.